For today's Sketch and Chat, we're going to talk about the importance of having something happen in your first piece of fiction. Howdy folks, Shell Presto de Baggio here, awesome artist, remarkable writer, and undaunted luminary of my time. My life is your lesson. So sit back, watch me draw part of my Incorrigible Imps comic for Bexham's Bazaar magazine, and let me tell it to you straight. Just so you all know what I'm drawing, uh, you may know that my Bexham's Bazaar illustrations features our Ascension Epoch characters, but in a medieval fantasy setting instead of a modern day urban fantasy setting. This is a reimagined version of Medusa from Copper Knights and Granite Men. Uh, if you've read it, you'll recognize her as the villain of that book, or villainess. You're seeing me draw her today because my subscriber on Subscribestar, Howdy Charlie, said he wanted Medusa here to go up next, and so she has. If you want more of a say in what you see on this channel, head over to Subscribestar.com slash Shellpresto. So what do I mean when I say have something happen in your first piece of fiction? I say fiction because this applies both to comic books and short stories or written works, uh, like book books as well. Most authors and storytellers have a big story in them. They have a character that they know all about, uh, they know their life story, they know it's going to be interesting. Whenever I create a character, I aim to create an interesting character, and I know that they're going to be interesting. But a new reader, when they've never heard of you before, does not know that they are going to be interesting. They are looking for something interesting that they like to keep them reading. Comic books nowadays, uh, especially from the big two, Marvel and DC, are written for a graphic novel format. Now, a graphic novel is really long. A graphic novel is usually a, about a hundred pages or more. But most indie comic artists and indie writers that I know of usually get their start in short stories or shorter pieces like, uh, you know, novellas and stuff like that. And if they put out a comic book, they usually just start with a 22-pager. If you walk into a comic store and pick up a comic, uh, especially nowadays, and especially for a new character, you're very likely to get a whole bunch of little questions and mysteries and at the end have a big cliffhanger that promises to lead into something larger. Now, that cliffhanger is a good idea, but, uh, well, let's give a hard example. I don't normally read the uh, new Miss Marvel comic, the girl with the stretchy arms, but the old Carol Danvers Miss Marvel logo on her chest. But I'm familiar with the first issue of the, co uh, of the comic. And, uh, it's not a particularly good first issue alone. I know this because you meet the girl's family, you meet some of the girl's friends, you know uh, the things she's not allowed to do, and one of them is to go to a party, and she sneaks off to a party anyway, and at the very end of the comic, uh, she has some kind of weird encounter or dream or something, and uh, the heroes of old are surrounding her and telling her she's special or something. It's, it's a completely normal story of a normal girl with just a supernatural something at the end. But there's no fight, uh, there's no, you know, bigger hints of what's actually happening to her, nothing's clearly defined. Uh, it's just normal life and this hint or promise of something interesting in the second issue. Now, the big two can do this because they're the big two. 
they've got advertising, they know they're going to get other books into the comic book shop. Uh, you know, in theory, if you like those comics, um, and you generally say like, oh, well, I like Marvel comics, and I have faith in Marvel comics, or I know this writer, odds are someone will actually look forward to and pick up number two. But if you're a nobody, that's not going to help you out. Uh, no one's going to have faith in that. If you end up charging four or five or six dollars for your comic, which you might, depending on uh, how much it costs you to buy an issue and get it printed and everything like that before you sell it, someone might look at it and say, hey, I, I spent five bucks on this thing and uh, nothing happened in it and I don't know this character very well and i don't really want to slap down another five dollars to figure out what's going on. And I see so many independent comics doing that nowadays. I've gone to cons and I've picked up comics by, you know, people who are I've never heard of before and they're comic, their whole story may be great, but, you know, it, it goes into, uh, you know, my uncle died and I'm going through his stuff and I find the superhero costume and I don't realize it, but, you know, this is a thing that gave him superpowers and there's no flashbacks to what kind of hero he was. There's no, uh, you know, you can have a, uh, fight as your flashback or something or have something happen. Uh, but it doesn't. They just, you know, then they go to school and they're thinking about the costume and they don't know and then maybe at the very, very end of the comic uh, something happens and there's a villain somewhere and this, you know, teenager for the first time pulls their costume on and the comic ends. And that's a solid start to an origin story, but it is every origin story ever. There's nothing that stands out about it. And it's painful because someone put a lot of effort into that and it's not going to catch someone. And a lot of times people put out their first issue and they expect it to uh, be as important to whoever's reading it as it is to them having created it. And it's just not. And then it they lose interest because no one ran away saying the first issue was great and uh, extolling it and, you know, yelling off the rooftops, other people need to check this out. Likewise, I've read a lot of books by no name authors that just end uh, without resolving anything or having anything, you know, grand happen in the book or you know, it's a very, very, very slow build, but it's still in a sci-fi or a fantasy or an action genre, and you can get 50 or 75% of the way through the book and not have any major conflict happen. Uh, and likewise, there's people that say, oh, well, there's plenty of uh, books that are popular that are three-part series or five-part series, and that's true, and making a series would be better, but some people just end it uh, willy-nilly right in the middle. And if you don't have something gripping happen, you're not going to get that person to, that reader, to pick up the next book, the next issue. Especially in comics, if you are not right up front committing to doing a graphic novel, you should be looking at older comics. Uh, in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, almost every comic had a beginning, middle, and end in 22 pages. Pick up an old issue of any of these major comics, X-Men, Avengers, Superman, whatever, you're gonna get a whole story. And that's necessary if you're just delivering 22 pages at a time to people. Likewise, you should check out 
some classic short stories to see how to fit a beginning, middle, and end in a small space. You can make a book longer if you want to make a book longer, of course, but you should generally have a problem present itself to the character, the character struggle with the problem, and the character solve the problem all within the first thing you present to someone. Because also, creating an ending is so very important. Um, I've even written off big name authors and such because they just can't pull an ending together. And endings are very hard to make. You have to tighten up the major strings, maybe lose, leave some room for a couple minor strings to hang loose to entice the reader to get another volume. And it has to be satisfying. I can do an entirely different video on endings, because uh, that's an art in and of itself. Richard Matheson, who wrote I Am Legend, is one of my all-time favorite authors. And uh, in the back of every single one of his novellas, it is chock full of short stories as well. Some of them just read like scenes, but they're exceptionally interesting scenes. Uh, you know, there's stories of, you know, little 12 year old girls or teenage girls or something uh, controlling mechs and fighting in wars. There's strange stories about. Uh, group of regular teenagers going to see zombies dance uh, because, you know, they're kept chained to walls for entertainment in certain nightclubs. All these weird and bizarre little scenes, but they're all very interesting stories. And all with their own small beginning, middle, and ends. The, uh, you know, Characters seem a little changed by the end of the story. And of course, uh, Richard Matheson, who also wrote episodes for the Twilight Zone, uh, was great at the twist ending. As a matter of fact, even just watching the Twilight Zone is a great example of how to build a little bit of characterization into a short story and also have your twist ending at the end. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is also uh, someone you should check out as far as short stories go. Instantly recognizable for Sherlock Holmes, but if you're saying, hey, I don't write mysteries, fret not. He actually wrote in a wide variety of genres. Uh, as far as larger-than-life characterization in a compact story with a beginning, middle, and end goes, you might want to check out some of his Challenger stories. Uh, they're sci-fi sometimes and can be very bizarre and Challenger is very larger than life and charismatic in a strange way and belligerent and uh, Mike and I like those stories so much that well Challenger Confidential and the Challenger Foundation got their names from them so I can give them a high endorsement if there's any chance that you've heard of uh, George Edward Challenger before, by the way, it's probably in relation to the novel, The Lost World. And if that makes you think Jurassic Park, it should, because it's about finding uh, dinosaurs in a dark area of a continent. I don't have a favorite among our books, uh, but I have to say I really love how After Dark reads. Um, After Dark is the first of our East End Irregulars books, and it's an episodic novel. I have a kid and chores, and I draw, and I write a lot. So, you know, I tend to be short on time, and I, I like novellas and uh, short stories. And an episodic novel is just what the doctor ordered when you're short on time, because you can, you know, read one chapter and put it down and come back later and you're not right in the middle of something even if the story grows and gets bigger as it goes along. Manly Wade Wellman was really good at episodic novels. So After Dark is a bunch of short stories that have illustrations and they're sort of, sort of strung together 
by chapters in the middle that are also short stories but connect the chapters together so that it's a larger story overall. The joy of filling a novel with short stories is that you don't waste time. Within the first 12 pages, Torrent tells you about how he got his powers, uh, what his powers are, he gets into a fight using his powers, and uh, well there's a bit of a discovery once he gets into a fight, but by the end of the first 12 pages, you know his origin, and he has a name. Torrent. Things slow down a little in the second chapter, where he meets his soon-to-be girlfriend, who, unbeknownst to him, is also a talent. But the promise of action is there. We've already proved by that point that we can write a uh, witty and exciting story. And, uh, you know, we don't linger too long on that. We get back into the action by the third chapter, actually. By the end of the book, Torrent will have gotten into five fights. Uh, well, four is Torrent, one is Sebastian. And by the end of our 160 pages, we will have shown the reader that, hey, we can present a problem and end the problem in an interesting and exciting way five times. We also set up a bunch of characters that are going to be major players in the next book. He left some strings hanging so that they could be hints for major storylines coming up in future books. And most importantly, we had a lot happen and showed the reader to give them confidence that hey, we can pull off a beginning, middle, and an end. And that's what you want to do. An entire story invites confidence, and confidence invites a second purchase. Now I say fight or encounter a lot because, you know, I do sci-fi and fantasy, and I like comic books, and everything like that. So, you know, most people going into that look for an actual encounter. You know, a, a good guy versus a bad guy, or a conflict, or, you know, anything like that. A scuffle. That's always exciting. But if it's, you know, something lower key, if it's a mystery, you know, have the clues presented. Have the main characters look at the clues. Have an ending to, you know, the who done it. If it's a romance, you know, have a major misunderstanding between the characters and have it resolve by the end. Temporarily. They don't have to, you know, get together if you want that to be the string along part of the story of the will they won't they. Um, if they're going to be together for the whole series, go ahead. Have them get together in the first issue. Have that kiss. Have that first date. If the you know, focus of the first issue is that your father or your uncle or someone was the superhero and you want it to end on, you know, Kid Awesome. That's actually a name of a hero in our book, but this example has nothing to do with him. But, you know, Kid Awesome putting on that the shadow-like scarf and uh, going out to fight crime, then do a flashback from the father or uncle or whoever and their days of heroing. Tell one of that older generation's great adventures. Just remember, if you're a nobody, and it's not bad to be a nobody, everybody has a start somewhere. But if you are a nobody, it is up to you to prove yourself to the reader. The reader does not owe you anything. You are trying to get the reader to part with their hard-earned money. So you have to show the value. You need to show that you can make a beginning, a middle, and an end to a story, even a very short story, and prove to them that that second book is worth their cash. This particular reimagining of Medusa is extra special because it is also a visualization of Bulwark's imagination of her. 
In Incorrigible Imps, uh, she's a witch who has cursed his town, and he's looking for help trying to mediate that situation. In Copper Knights and Granite Men, where Bulwark and Medusa both originally appear, he's one of her victims of uh, her petrification solution. In both versions, he's not particularly fond of her, so you can imagine how this is embellished. A pretentious, super-powered musician, an ageless techno wizard, and a radioactive commando walk into a museum and find everyone turned to stone. Copper Knights and Granite Men is a witty and suspenseful superhero adventure that draws from the King in Yellow mythos and taps the secret occult history of North America. Likewise, I also mentioned After Dark, our episodic novel, a good bit during this video. Uh, it's book one in the so far two book series, East and Irregulars. If you'd like to support the channel, buying a book is a good way to go. I've also set up a subscribe star with various perks at various tiers, from voting on what topics I talk about to getting ebooks when we release them. Right now, one cool guy named Charlie is calling the shots, so if you want to say too, subscribe star is your way to go. I do pay attention to what folks say in the comments too, of course, and if you have any questions or suggestions about pacing your fiction or what I'm drawing or anything else, ask away below. I'd especially love to know what single issue of a comic or what short story writer you recommend the most. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to tag along on my creative journey and like learning from my victories and mistakes. Most importantly of all, though, have an awesome day, folks. Presto, over and out. You might be thinking, Presto, you only talk about old comics. Why don't you read something new? I do read new comics, but a lot of them are web comics. But here's a really great example of a comic with a beginning, middle, and end in a few short pages. It's by Marshall Lee of Marsh Makes Comics, an excellent YouTube channel. And it's only seven pages, but it has a clear conflict in message and the ending packs a punch. It's just a great short story. If it was a 22-pager and an ongoing series, there'd be plenty of space left to delve into some characterization and do setup for another issue. But it's a good read as is, and an excellent example of saying a lot in just a few pages. As a matter of fact, a lot of his comics do that. I particularly like Darby Cufflink, but that's a very niche brand of humor directed at old school comic book fans. Anyway, you can check out his stuff on DonkeyJawProjects.com, and like I said, his channel is Marsh Makes Comics. Have an awesome day, folks. Presto, over and out. Farewell and adieu to you, fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you, ladies of Spain.